Victory. Masalia Madebidi. I can imagine what they were calling you in Atlanta. <laughs> but by the way, on the street, we know him simply as my DVD. You know this, right? He's a cool guy. Short and sweet speech, unlike the guy before him. <laughs> Who wanted to call everybody in this room to speak <laughs> and announce KCSC results? <laughs> You guys are a great audience. Thanks so much. Look, we're going to have a musical interlude right now, but uh, because of time, and cabinet, prime cabinet secretary has just come back from Atlanta. He's got a little bit of jet lag. You notice his American accent a little bit, right? He said, Atlanta. Did you hear me? <laughs> In Atlanta, United States of America. The deputy ambassador here is approving he likes it. <laughs> think of this initiative, this goal, this legacy, this dream. The dire Africa director of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Paulin Basinga. Paulin, where are you? Yeah, there you are. Just a, a couple of words of what you think, and then we move around the room, and then I'll let you guys go. But nobody stands up until I say so. Thank, thank you very much, Jeff. Very difficult to follow. Great speeches. Uh, maybe I can come here. Not to stand on the Chancellor's, uh, Chancellor's podium, but very, thank you very much, Chancellor, for, for having me here. I am uh, Paulin Basinga, um, at Sante Sana, to be in Kenya, so I'm the Africa Director for the Gate Foundation. Uh, all protocol observed. Uh, Excellency, thank you so much for welcoming us here in Kenya. Uh, our CEO, Max Sussman, and Mr. Bill Gates himself, when he was here, discussed with the President the opportunity to open an office here. Uh, the government has been amazing in terms of really speeding up the process. Everything has been in place. We are now in Kofisi. We have an office now. Three staff here will be expanding our presence here. So thank you so much. Now, just a few words to say we are behind the big five in a big way. And I will say this mainly on behalf of the young students who are singing here. I grew up in DRC. I can speak Lingala. They, they sang in Lingala. Did you, did you pick that? Yes. Really good song in Lingala. And they uh, sang the East African uh, anthem, really represent Kenya in this region. And at the same time, they sang the University of Nairobi anthem, which was really powerful. It was my first time to, to hear it. I think everyone should really listen to that. You know, that the University of Nairobi is the pinnacle of excellence for knowledge to serve the people of Kenya, but also to serve all mankind. So we at the Gate Foundation, we support health, agriculture development, financial inclusion in Africa and around the world, and you've chosen the right chancellor. We work with Patrick in his other capacity, and you could see him globally talking about this university. It's infectious. He's bringing the whole world here. So thank you very much, Chancellor. So, we're here, we'll continue to support the University of Nairobi just because it's the right thing to do, because they are supporting the government of Kenya to do something that we strongly believe in, to use data for evidence. Because as we know, we cannot solve most of the problem that we have without using evidence. And we've been working with uh, University of Nairobi, the Center for Modeling, Epidemiology Modeling and Analysis, They've been doing an amazing job. We've made a grant of five million US dollar. We are continuing discussion with them to expand that support in the long term so that we can really continue. I remember Vice Chancellor, you hosted Mr. Bill Gates at the university. He went back, he said there is talent in Kenya. So we'll continue to support that. This is, you know, uh, you know uh, the big five number, you know, big five, the number five one, but also we will be expanding the, the connection to other part of the Gate Foundation and other philanthropies for them to know that there is talent here. Now, let me switch a little bit in Swahili and say something. I think the permanent you know, secretary of education, you said something very powerful. I used to work at a university before I joined the Gate Foundation 12 years ago. I was the dean of the School of Public Health in Rwanda. The big challenge that your talented people have is the bureaucracy in the university, 
the hierarchy in the university because we at the Gate Foundation or any other philanthropies, it's very difficult to give unrestricted grant. We want universities to apply for grants. Most of the time, what Wanandika grant ni Wanani? The young people. They spend nights at the university, they write grants, but when the money comes at the university, it's stuck in the process. You know, the chancellor, the vice chancellor, the professor, five, 10 PIs. I've been at the foundation for 12 years. I've been trying my best to send money to universities in Tanzania, in Uganda, in Kenya, in Rwanda. I sit on the board of the University of Global Health and Equity in Rwanda. The chancellor is uh, Jim Kim. And they've been able to streamline the process to move things quickly because for the big five to move, you actually need to access funding. And you have a master's in grant writing here. You need to make sure that when investors put money in the University of Nairobi, they know that it will go quickly. But if the process starts being slow, the report is not coming, etc., this is why we give the money to implementing partners, we look for a fiduciary partner that will manage, and then when the money goes to a fiduciary partner, they take indirect cost instead of the indirect cost coming to the university. I think Chancellor will say, Mana Swahili Vizuri Sana, do you see how to go to two? Uh, so my Swahili is, is broken, but I'll, I'll do my best. To Naomba, Fanya Viote, Kabisa, Franga Yingi, Apa Africa, then at to Mikisha Vizuri, Apana Kukonyo Kesha Franga, Kisha Biendembio. Juka Mahiko Ivi, I want to at a petition of what Wingin Franga Nain. So that's my advice as an African, as a Kenyan, and we will be able to make that. Thank you so much. Paul Ambasingo, ladies and gentlemen, Africa Director, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Once more, round of applause, please. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Professor, you, Professor Vakoyan, you understood that Swahili, right? Franca, yeah, yeah money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is Nardos uh, Thomas here? Is she gone? Is she here? Nardos? Okay. What about uh, Winnie Car Carano? Winnie, are you here? Winnie, Winnie, Winnie. Okay, real quick. Wamboi uh, Shege, Director Agri Food and Climate at the uh, MasterCard Foundation. Are you here? Oh, there you are. Microphone to her, please, real quick. Thanks, Jeff. And um, just to start, Jeff and I were former colleagues many, many years ago when I started my work life in Kenya. Um, working both in Reuters in Nairobi as well as in Juba. Oh, I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> you are the one. Yes, I am the one. Goodness gracious me. What happened to me? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a bit of a surprise, but uh, very happy to be here and very, here, very happy to actually hear about the Big Five um, agenda for the University of Nairobi. I think it's a great dream. So my name is Wamboy, as you had, and... Um, Director for Agri-Food Systems and Climate at the MasterCard Foundation. I'm based in Nairobi. So the MasterCard Foundation is um, also one of the world's largest foundations, very similar to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And our goal about, in about, about uh, five years ago now, in 2018, 2019, we transitioned our work, a lot of it, from Canada to Africa. And the reason we did that was to make sure that we focus on what we consider as Africa's greatest challenge, but also, as Patrick said, Africa's greatest opportunity. And that is to help support and solve for the youth unemployment challenge on the continent. And how we do that is we've set ourselves a really big and ambitious and audacious goal of enabling 30 million dignified and fulfilling work opportunities for young Africans on the continent, 70% of whom must be women. We have a strong partnership um, with um, many universities across the continent, including University of Nairobi, through our programs um, with RU Forum, which is a forum for agricultural universities across the continent, and the recently announced partnership um, to, to produce um, 1,000 PhDs in Africa every single year. But we don't just stop there. So most recently, um, when we were looking at how do we solve for what are the best pathways to work, actually, 
on the continent because this is a question that every government is asking itself. This is a question everyone who's working on this continent is asking. And we found two pathways through our reviews recently. The first is entrepreneurship development is a major, major pathway because you come out of school, you do not have a job. Most likely you will end up employing yourself or figuring out a way to become self-employed. And by the way, most young people do not just have one job, they have hustles, very, very many. And the way they define dignified and fulfilling is we let them define dignified and fulfilling. The other pathway is workforce development. And so we have to prepare young people to be able to take up opportunities. And when you were talking about the green jobs and the green economy, that was like music to our ears because the future of Africa is green. We have the natural capital, we have the talent, we must equip our young people to seize opportunities in the green economy. So our priorities as a foundation for work are really aligned with what you have unveiled as the University of Nairobi, and we look forward to supporting you. We're working in digital economy, um, entrepreneurship development, um, health, and education, um, green economy, which is now a really focus, a really huge focus for us, as well as uh, workforce development. So all the best, and we look forward to working together. Thank you, Amboy, appreciate that. Can't believe that you went all the way to the top and we're still here. <laughs> Goodness, what went wrong? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, uh, an interview with uh, U.S. Ambassador Meg Wigman, which hopefully many of you watched. I'm sure you did. There were thousands of views, but maybe not in this room. Um, and she's great. I mean, she was talking about the upcoming trip with the then of the president and uh, his team and Kenya moving forward. 60 years of partnership with America. Fantastic. Representing her today here in the room is the Deputy Ambassador to the United States. Please welcome Mark Dillard. Please say a couple of words, Mark, if you don't mind. Ambassador, yeah. Couple words. Uh, good evening. So we have talked a little bit about the uh, the visit, and uh, His Excellency the Prime Cabinet Secretary was was there last week. And as I listened to the presentation about the Big Five tonight, I couldn't help but think about the visit because, as we planned that visit, as we thought about it. Um, uh, as Jeff has just said, we were trying to commemorate 60 years of partnership, but also think about the next 60 years of partnership. So what were some of the themes that we built that, uh, that visit around? What I heard tonight, I heard about entrepreneurship. We made a lot of announcements about uh, supporting entrepreneurship and about the tech sector in, in Kenya. Um, I heard in the Big Five about uh, green jobs, and we, we did a lot of work to support the Africa Green uh, Industrialization Initiative in terms of our, our, our deliverables. Um, I heard about um, AI. We welcomed news from Microsoft and G42 for a new data center, uh, the, a data center to be built here that is going to power um, AI, uh, the, the computational power that we need for AI as we develop. I heard about leadership. We announced the Kennedy and Boya scholarships, uh, hearkening back to the Kennedy airlift, the difference that that kind of education made to leadership in both the United States and Kenya. We, we tried to nod to that uh, along with the framework agreement that His Excellency talked about in terms of STEM education, uh, so that, that, that leadership piece. Um, and in health, uh, we of course had a, had a uh, a session at the Centers for Disease Control that the, the Prime Cabinet Secretary discussed. Um, hopefully beyond his, his name, we talked about uh, research initiatives uh, between Kemri and the US CDC, but also we talked about medical manufacturing and the support that USAID has made for med medical manufacturing for the future of Kenya. So what I heard tonight was uh, that great minds think alike. U.S. Deputy Ambassador to Kenya, they call him the DCM, Mark Dillard. I still apply for that visa, I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> Maybe we'll ask Masalia Madavidi 
Folks, we just about come to the end of our program for today. You guys have been fantastic audience this evening. Thank you so much for all your patience, for your time. I was supposed to conclude this program by 10 o'clock. It is 10.05. I am on time. If it wasn't for Ezekiel Mashogu. Man, if you gave him another hour, he would still be saying, KCSE results. Hey, she be. <laughs> it's a great guy. It's a great guy. All right, folks, just to conclude this, I'd like to ask my good friend, Professor Patrick Vakoyan, to come and give some concluding and thank you remarks and vote of thanks. My coffee quack it off that. My coffee. Thank you, Jeff. I just, during all these speeches, I received a WhatsApp from my daughter from the Netherlands in Amsterdam, 16 years old because this is broadcasted globally, of course. And she wrote to me, she said, this guy who just spoke before you, great voice. Would you agree, Ella? <laughs> great voice. So thank you so much, Jeff, for, for taking the effort of, uh, of moderating, not only this evening, but also bringing this agenda to, the, to, to Kenya as a whole, to, to the continent as a whole. Super important that media is here today. They don't, don't only report on the noise, on the kitchen issues, but on the big picture, because we're moving forward as University of Nairobi, indeed. One, two, thank you so much, um, Prime Cabinet Secretary, for your strong leadership with your colleagues here on lifting the university, lifting this country, lifting this continent, and rallying support behind the big five. Because we need the government behind it. Because if you go, indeed, to the US on a state visit, or next week, your president to Korea on a state visit, we need these bilateral leadership engagements coming behind this higher education agenda. And thank you so much, Prime Minister, Prime Cabinet Secretary, for your strong support. I was thinking, Wangira, about that bronze statue, which is not there. And I think the time has come that we as Kenya, we don't say no to things anymore. We take things which we deserve. So that bronze statue has to come and has come to very soon in, in others indeed. So thank you, <laughs> Pauline. On behalf of Bill and Melinda and the Gates Foundation and the MasterCard Foundation to come behind this Big Five agenda because we do need philanthropy to come in on this agenda indeed. And thank you also, Pauline, to be so frank to outline how complicated it, it might be internally uh, within universities to get money flowing. We are committed to open our house, to be extremely critical to make this happen. So I'm enlisting you now, Pauline, and your MasterCard colleague to lead the Champions Group of Philanthropies around the Big Five to come back in the next couple of months on September 20th when Ban Ki-moon is here at the University of Nairobi, that you report back. Our report card is one, two, three, four, five. Commitments are A, B, C, and that we rally the philanthropic world behind the big five, indeed. Thank you, Moses Korea, for your strong commitment of bringing the Kennedy School of Government in a sort of a tripartite behind the Leadership Institute, indeed. Thank you, your, uh, Supreme Court Judge. Your, 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 your. Judiciary needs to be aligned with the Leadership Institute. We're in, we're game, and we enlist you as champion as well. Given that this evening is broadcasted, means we're all on the record. I'm on the record, you're on the record. We have your names, we have your numbers, we have your email addresses. We will chase you as of tomorrow morning. I specifically also want to um, Acknowledge Toivo. Toivo, where are you? Toivo here of the Boston Consulting Group. You may think Boston Consulting Group is very expensive to support the Big Five. No, they're doing this on a pro bono basis, and I want to thank them for doing to bring the global community to the world. I also want to thank Matthew McKinnon, who has been with me for two decades. All the great ideas, all the things I take credit, he conceptualized them. So thank you, Matthew. But particularly, I want to thank also the university staff faculty, students who brought this um, partnership forum uh, together. In the, thank you, Bernard, for uh, your, your kind words. This is a journey. It has a beginning. 
It has an end, and there are steps in between. I'm not a pessimist. I'm also not an optimist. I'm extremely determined to make this work and to be able to report back quarter by quarter by quarter on progress to you, Honorable Cabinet Prime Secretary, to you, CS Education, and indeed to President Ruto, where we are on the Big Five, failure is not an option. Thank you so much. Good evening, all for all.